Hi, this is section 12.2, multivariable. We want to look at graphs and surfaces, so we want to graph in 3D. So again, we're going to look at f of xy is equal to x squared plus y squared. You should have graphed this and tried this out, and you get this shape that looks like a supercharged parabola, and when we call it a paraboloid. And then how did this happen? Well, we can graph this many different ways. You can use cross-sections by fixing one of the variables, x, y, or z, to a certain number and then get cross-sections and see what, what kind of shapes are formed from that. Uh, the other way is to use a table of values, which we'll get to a little bit later. So if I want to look at this, let's try to keep z fixed. So I'm going to graph x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So if I do that, that's going to be this semi uh, this circle right here. So that's going to be z x plus x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. z is equal to 1, so that's what the height. And then we go to the next one and we're going to get similar type thing up here. I'm not going to be very good with this, but that's what we end up with. And then x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, so z is equal to 4. I'm going to get this shape here. So these are circles and this one would be a radius of 2 but then z is equal to 4, okay? So that's what we end up with. And so that's, if we did a bunch of these things, if we did more and more and more and more, we would get a better shape that would look exactly like this paraboloid. So that's one way to graph them. Looking at those cross sections from the top view, I made this drawing here, and so this is the same exact thing that we just kind of did, and then we have those concentric circles that help us out and tell us what we do have for a picture. So let's now do it with keeping our X fixed. And it'll be very similar if we keep our Y fixed because we have symmetry about uh, the Z axis there. But if we keep X fixed and make cross sections with X, X equal to 2, 1, negative 2, and so on, we would get this equation. We would get F of... 1y is equal to 1 plus y squared, and then we'd also get f of negative 2y would equal to 4 plus y squared. So all of these are going to turn out to be a parabola that's shifted up a little bit, and so we want to see what does happen. We can even do f of 0y, that'd be a good one to have, which would be just y squared. So when I do these cross sections, if I do this one right here, that would just be a parabola. And so if I draw this in, and I'm going to try to do the best I can, that would just be a parabola that would go through the origin. So that's this one here. The actual picture that I have, and I don't know how well this showed up on your drawing, though, is that when x is equal to 2, I'm going to get this parabola right here. And so that would be this one right here. It's going to be y squared, and then we're going to bump up by 2. So this vertex comes right along there with the 2. And if I continue this on, now for the f is equal to 1, I'm going to get another parabola here. And so I can make all of these different parabolas, and it will give us a, a better idea of what this paraboloid does look at like. And so then this one would be for negative 2. That would be my x equal to negative 2, which would give me this equation right here. It's another parabola, 4 plus y squared, that's popped up there. So put all those together, then you would get the shape of the paraboloid. Now, some of this you won't have to do, some of it you might have to do, but it will give you an idea of what the graphics programs go through when they try to make these drawings. So maybe you work for Desmos someday and you help them become the 3D artist for their program, which they don't have 3D as of the moment. Maybe that's your next job. Ooh, cool. Okay, then, um, the table of values is the other way to do these, and so we can plug in a bunch of points. Now, when we do this, we do this X by Y, and then inside the table would be your Zs. And so when I chart this off... X's and Y's are on the top and bottom, on top and side, and then the Z value is in between. So if I look at these, uh, I can pick any one out here. If I look at this one right here, that means that X is 1, 
y is 0, so if I go 1 squared plus 0 squared, I'm going to get a z value of 1. Similarly, I picked out some other ones. Where's f of negative 2, 2? Well, negative 2, 2 would be this one right here. So then that's going to give me the 8. And then 3, negative 3, you can find that one. 3, and then negative 3, that would be this one right here. So that's 18. So those are all the different values that you can uh, create. And then we get a little computerized program thing that connects the dots. And look at how kind of rough this is. So obviously, if you pick more values than just the integer values, you're going to get a much more smooth curve. More values makes it look smooth. So this is some of the ideas that graphics programs go through again. Okay, now we want to do some examples. Describe the transformation of this paraboloid, x squared plus y squared, to make the following graphs. Don't graph until you make a good guess. So in other words, you're going to try to figure out what the transformation is, and then go ahead and graph it, and maybe if you can sketch it a little bit on the side, that would be good too. I'm going to let you do all those. Guess, graph it, and then check. There's a couple more on the next page as well. So on those ABCs, did you guess? Did you check? And then make sure you compare with other students when you get to class. See what they got, and then ask me if you got any questions about that. So let's use this cross-sections idea to go ahead and graph some things. If I take this right here, x squared minus y squared, it's going to be a little bit different. We want to try to do the y fixed, and then we're going to go ahead and do the x being fixed. So if we go ahead here, and this is all written out for you, sorry. But if we do the x, I'm sorry, the y being fixed, let's put in a value of b. Then for x, we're going to have different things going on. Well, if you notice this, what shape is that in two dimensions? Well, that is a parabola. And which way does that open? Well, that opens up. Okay, so we're going to have a bunch of parabolas that open up. Now, for this one, if we go ahead and fix the x value, we're going to fix the x value here then this would be a parabola that would open relative to the y-axis. It would open down because the y is negative. So this is parabola opens down. Now what does that mean for us? We have some parabolas opening up and some parabolas opening down. Well, the cool thing about this is that you end up with something that's called a saddle and it looks exactly like a saddle, and you end up with a saddle point as well. And so here are all the parabolas that open up. That's from my x, I'm sorry, my y value being fixed. And then here, all the parabolas open down, that's for my x value being fixed. Yeah, I got to get that sorted there. And so when I do my cross sections, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some of these and I'm going to have some of these. These will be running one way. It's like I'm kind of looking down the y-axis here, right? So here's the y-axis. And with the y-axis, when I look down it, it's all going to be parabolas opening up. Now this one, this one has z and it has the y here, so this is like looking down the x-axis here. And when I look down the x-axis, this is all going to be parabolas opening down. So that would be from this perspective, and then the y's would be from this perspective. And so when you put them together, you get what we call a saddle. And you also have what we call a saddle point, which is, it occurs in uh, mathematics and economics, so your saddle point and where things end up, all right? And so you should be able to kind of see what's going on with these. Do some of them by hand. A lot of it will be with technology, but some by hand to figure out what the graphs look like. I do really encourage you to spend some time with the... Um, with the graphing program and try graphs and play around and see what happens with them. Okay, now if we have a linear function in two variables or of two variables, then this will turn into a plane. 
So here's a linear, here's a linear. I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to put a 2 here because it just will be a little bit more special if I do that. So if I want to graph something like this, I want to do uh, each one of these fixed values for instance for z. So if I have z is equal to 0, that means that 0 is equal to 1 plus 2x minus y. z equal to 1. 1 is equal to 1 plus 2x minus y. z equal to 2. So I'm fixing the z, even though it's changing, I'm fixing it. 1 plus 2x oops, minus y. So if I write this in slope-intercept form, I'm going to get each one of these values. Now notice the slope is always negative 2. So if I graph this middle one, that's just going to go through 0, 0, and it's going to have a slope of negative 2. So it's going to look something like this. And then this one would have a y-intercept of 1, so it's going to look like this. And this one would have a y-intercept of negative 1, and I think that we kind of go up and down with that. Now, how does that help us? Well, what we have to realize, though, is that when I graph this one in the middle, that tells me that z is equal to 1. So that's going to be elevated on the z-axis up by 1. When I have z is equal to 2, that's going to be elevated to z is equal to 2. So you're going to have all these parallel lines, but they're going to step up like a, a, a ladder, I suppose you could say. And then z equal to 0 would be this one, so this one's right on the z-axis. So this would just be from a perspective of the x and y plane. I should have labeled this at the beginning. Just from the perspective of the x-y plane. Then you pop up based upon which z-value you did fix at each one of those times. So what do we end up with? We do end up with a plane. I hope you can see that. Go ahead and graph it on your uh, software and see how that does look. Now what if another what if a variable is missing? So if I have z is equal to x squared, here y can be anything. And so when y is anything, it's going to probably look the same shape all the way down when you look from the y-axis perspective. And so z is equal to x squared is simply a parabola. Looks like this. So when I look down, my so when I look down my y-axis, so I drew a little y-axis down here, I'm just going to see this tunnel of all these parabolas. And so when you go ahead and graph this on your calculator, you're going to, or your whatever program you're using, you're just going to see this tunnel of parabolas. Yes? And so that's what you're going to have. And this is called, I believe it's called a cylindrical parabola. Or parabolas, I can't remember exactly, but it looks like a cylinder kind of but it's got an open ended open end so it is a parabola so what do you think is going to happen if you have z is equal to y squared what can x be well x can be anything so if x can be anything i'm going to have a tunnel as well but it's going to be shooting down looking down the x axis so when i'm looking down this x axis on this, I'm just going to see a tunnel of the parabolas again, and then that would give me my cylinder shape that doesn't actually close. Parabola, par look it up, parabolic cylinder or something like that. Okay, now for this last one, notice that z is missing. And so for my z value, z can be anything. So when I look down the z-axis, it's always going to be the same looking through it, I guess is the best way to, to do this. And what shape is this? Well, this is a circle. So you're going to end up with a cylinder. So if this is my, if this is my, well, you can't even see my z-axis, but if this is x versus my y, I'm just going to get a circle like this. If I'm looking down here, and then this is going to be good for any z value, I look down this side, and I'm going to see just a circle. However, if I start twisting it a little bit, what do you think you're going to get? Look at my beautiful drawing. You're going to get a cylinder. So you're going to get a cylinder from that perspective looking down at the z. Okay, so 
this one would have a radius, this one right here would have a radius of 1, this one would have a radius of 2. So that's what the pictures would be like. Please go ahead and check the software that this is correct, and then play around, figure out something new. Bring something new back to class and see what's going on with that. All right, so this is 12.2. Thanks for listening, and keep on playing with those graphs.